Welcome to the Manifestation Lab. This is your host, Kelly Howe. From the grounded science to the mystical and unseen, we're investigating this big experiment we call life and finding what really works when it comes to manifesting a life that sets your heart and your soul on fire. Welcome to the lab. Okay, so seriously, I have had so much resistance to doing this podcast. I have literally been putting this on my intention list and my vision board for over three years, and I am finally sitting down to do this. But here's the thing. I am recognizing, even though I had all this resistance and all this fear, and I could come up with a million reasons that I didn't want to do it and that I should just keep doing what I'm doing... But every single time I sit down to have one of these conversations, it lights me up from the inside. And if there is one thing that I preach and I want everyone to know and understand is to follow those feelings, those things, those little breadcrumbs that light you up, that enliven you and bring you energy and just make you feel amazing. Even if they're little, they are absolutely your soul talking to you. It is absolutely your higher self giving you information through your body, through that expansive feeling that you need to pay attention and to do more of that. So I'm finally practicing what I preach and I'm sitting down today with Mary Sice. Mary is a licensed clinical social worker. She is an author. She co-authored The Energy of Belief and she's also the author of Tapping the Panic Out of the Pandemic. Mary is considered a pioneer in the field of energy psychology. You guys know I am obsessed with energy psychology, with tapping, um, with TFT, EFT, all of it. I love it. For 20 years, Mary has been personally trained in energy healing by Her Holiness Saima and serves as the director of Saima's Magdalena Healing Program. Don't worry, we're going to get in and talk about that as well. She teaches internationally and her work integrates energy psychology and spiritual psychology. Known for her capacity to make spiritual concepts relevant and clear, her practice serves and supports healers, leaders, influencers who all have a mission to serve in the planet's awakening. That might be you. If hearing those words lights you up, please pay attention to that. Mary is certainly speaking my language. She is talking directly to my soul and my soul's mission to reach more people and to serve as the planet awakens and heals. And we have so much fun in this conversation. We even get in and do a little bit of tapping. So this is where I want to remind you all that these conversations are all posted over on YouTube. So if you go over and follow the Manifestation Lab on YouTube, you can check those out. And that way you can actually watch as we're tapping and see what she's doing. Uh, Mary also uses props in her office to, you know, draw analogies and make some models for us while she's talking. And those those props that she uses are amazing and actually truly helps get her point across. So you'll be able to see that on the YouTube video as well. If you feel like your soul has a calling and you've been hearing it and you've been trying to ignore it, <laughs> this conversation is for you. Enjoy. I would love to just kind of start, I want to talk about how much you've helped the industry and what you're doing for the spiritual psychology. And, um, but first I want to go back and I want to hear about what was your upbringing like and what led you to social work and kind of put you on this path towards energy medicine? Okay. So I was born in the fifties, 1952. So that tells you how old I am. And, um, I'm the second oldest of 12 kids. So it was like, right. Like, after the war, you know, it was like these guys came home from the war. People got married. I think my parents dated three months, although they knew each other in high school. Oh, my gosh. And uh, it, it, anyway, you know how it goes back then. So it's like one kid after another kid after another kid. So it, 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 it's it, we were laughing the other day, my husband and I, actually, because we were looking at my my um, grandkids and it, like there's only two of them and they kind of really get along. And I said, you know, I I probably would have been that generous too if they stopped with me. But they didn't. They kept going. Like you know, I said, I think I got the most screwed up. I, I had an older brother, two younger brothers. I think I was okay there. But when they brought that girl oh my home, gosh. like 
what do we need her for? Like, you know, right. that I, said, I think I tanked there. I said, well, we were just laughing, but it was a different time. Yeah. A totally different time. And, and um, so uh, basically what I can say is early on, I realized there's lots of different people on this planet and this place is a little nutty. And what the heck are these people? Right. Thinking, what am I doing you know? in this family? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And like, and uh, I, I often say, I, I started bossing people around when I was three, I think it like, and so it was just like, I'm just one of these, I know what I know. And I tell you what I think. And not always, not always the most popular person in the, at the table. So anyway, that's where it started. 12 and kids. I, you know, 12 kids and like, uh, I don't know, you knew how to tie your shoe before the other guy you could read before everybody. Like, I, I just assume people aren't going to follow what I yeah. say. Like I have this weird thing. And uh, I'm really shocked when people don't listen to me. So, so. how much of that? Anyway, how much so of that I, is like <laughs> is because you were the second of oldest of twelve, and like you kind of had to step mm-hmm. into that role? And how much was is that just your like this is my soul, this is what I came here to be and do? You know, is to just kind of be in charge. I think it's both. Yeah, I really think your soul designs a little bit um, when you jump in. What are the right things to get you kind of going on mm-hmm. your path. I do think there is a design to I that. I think so too. I'm glad um, you brought that up because you know. I've been mm-hmm. pondering that a lot that I really truly believe at this point. I don't think I did for a long time, but I do believe at this point that mm-hmm. there's like, there's an intention that our soul goes, yeah, I'm going mm-hmm. into that body with yeah. that baggage for yeah. that reason. And these are the Well, I don't know if they want the baggage as much. Okay. So, I I mean, I don't think we're that foolish up there. I do, but I do what I do know because I, for 20 years, and that's all part of my story too. Like when I got to the end of what I knew and my world was kind of crumbling with death and death and Mm -hmm. things like that. I actually, you know, when you're ready, the teacher comes, I met her holiness, Saima, who's enlightened master. So believe me, I pummeled her with questions like, well, why did my sister die? Like, what, how do you get here? What's the, you know, and, and to make sense of when you asked me how to get into spiritual psychology, it, it was only when I had the answers to those mm-hmm. questions that I could serve myself first and then my clients to bring things to a whole new level of understanding. So what I do know now from a living master her holiness, I'm so grateful is in my world. And, uh, and um, is that the soul has to find parents mm-hmm. and it, you, well, let me say it this way. You leave the planet and, uh, and with the baggage you carry, mm-hmm. okay. If you haven't forgiven people, you're still mad about, you know, whatever. And so all that energy is your energy. It's got your name on it. I call it your signature energy. Okay. So that comes with you. You have to put it in baggage claim for a while. Then you go to the level based on how much um, uh, fear is still in your field. Now, when you want to come back, you have, and you say, I want to come back. I got to fix that because you know, you're light and you're divine. And like when you're out of this Mm -hmm. body. And so you have to like start finding souls that are going to bring you in and uh, whatever floor you're on, say you and I, of course, we're on the sixth floor. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's it's not really levels like we think, but so you have to go ask, you ask all these souls, they tell you you're going back, will you be my mother? And they say, no, nah. what do you got to go for? No, no. And then, then you, you can't go a floor above you where more enlightened people are. You got to go to the next floor and then oh the next gosh. floor and then the next floor. Do you find somebody to get you wow. in? And you don't always, I wouldn't say we specifically plan to be, you know, we have some probably some karma to burn mm-hmm. and we have our energies. We have to go back to baggage claim, take our old baggage, come right. back in. <laughs> and, um, but, but it, I always you know, use the metaphor of, um, it's like going to college, you know, you want to study math. Okay. I'm going to study, you know, political science or something. So, so we know we have a different curriculum a little bit, but we don't know, are we going to sleep through that class? Is the teacher going to show up? I don't think we have because of free will right. down here. Yeah. We don't plan the whole mm. thing. So some things happen and we have frequencies in our field that we wanted to transmute. Like I never forgave myself for whatever. Mm. So I have to forgive myself because this is a planet that has fear and love. Mm. Yeah. I've, so it goes something like along that line. So I don't think like, oh, I think I'll be raped right, in this lifetime. Right, or I, all. My, well, I don't think we're that, you know, but we will have to experience maybe a betrayal. Sure. Did it need to be that big? Yeah, I don't know. no, you I don't did a beautiful job it. explaining that. And I, I yeah. haven't heard it described yeah. quite like that, but I really like that. Um, yeah. So I'm curious yeah. what you think, because this yeah. is another thing I've sort of been pondering is this, you know, 
there's all this research coming out on generational trauma and things like that. Mm -hmm. And so when I say baggage, that's actually one of the places that I'm I'm curious about, because I think that my soul really needed to, Mm -hmm. and is still learning how to like express my authenticity and like through that throat chakra Mm -hmm. and open that up. And I entered into a family that has a lot of blocks, like a lot of thyroid issues. Mm -hmm. And, um, Mm -hmm. and so I've been curious about that. Like, was that part of the choice? I don't know what you think about that. That's part of it too. So at conception, what happens energetically is the roots of everything. So, so the, your parents, so they said they'd bring you in. Mm-hmm. Okay. They're like, you all right, gotta, good. you got a yeah, contract. Let's do this. All right. You got that part. You don't ask for a resume, not even a background check. <laughs> you don't even ask for a credit check. Okay. Oh God, I got a ride in. Okay. <laughs> they come together. And at that moment of, these are Simas teaching. So at the moment of conception, the roots are formed. And then you as a soul, Let's make it this way. So here's your soul, right? And you, they, and you like, boom, you pop in and then you go out for a while. Then you come back in, you come back in. And then when you stay in, that's when birth happens. So you already have, and then your soul, when you're back in your mother's womb, like you go back and forth, you pick up all the energies in her mm-hmm. womb. That's where the, um, the generational energetics come in the, okay. in the, um, in the quantum DNA, according to Saima. Okay. So yes, all that's mm-hmm. in there. Okay. And the, the good news is with tapping, with the things we know how to do energetically, once you decide with your free will, I am releasing mm-hmm. that, then you're able to gener- go back right. generations and get it because energy can yeah, do it's that. Fascinating. And you're very powerful. Remember your, your divinity, you're a soul. You're like, you got some baggage out right. here, but that's not who you are. So you're super powerful. The problem is, I'll show, I love to use props. So here you are, you come in. Okay. Then your father fights with your mother. Now there's anger in your field. Now he leaves you. Okay. I got abandonment. Now he like, you know, grandma comes, she likes you. So you got some love yeah. in there. Okay. But now this one, you know, um, let's see, your sister comes like, who the heck needs her? Now I'm jealous. I put jealous. It's like, you're all covered yeah. up. And in in energy psychology, the the beauty of it is we once we identify that's in there, you can use your tapping to release it, and then free yourself from that. Free yourself from that, and this has to reemerge because this is the truth of who you are. It's, you're, it's like a cork being held underwater. You have to come up. It's energy right. law, right? But what we have to do as humans is. Stop pretending we're this or little or small or all the other stunts we had to do to survive Um, or me big, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, to be like, uh, yeah, to to free yourself from that. So the full expression of this can come. And then the work I love doing, I know you didn't even ask this Um, question. It's coming. It's coming. So go for it. Okay. My game is, okay, so now we've got a lot of this is cleared. Now I'm becoming this pillar of light as the therapist, as the healer, as the influencer. And then I clear more. Oh, I found this is in there. Let me clear that. Let me clear that. It clear that. Then you become this. Mm. Then you get real good like a master. You become this. You just walk in a room and your presence can can uh, oh, I'm going foggy. Yeah, You're going foggy, but I liked it because it was it was really okay. pretty. You just go, yeah, you walk in a room and you're this because why? All this is out yeah. of your field. You're able to influence just by the vibration of your field. Now you may do some tapping tricks, who cares? But this is what's right. doing the work. This is where we get really powerful as tapping professionals or as influencers or, yeah. or whatever. You just you just can walk in. Right. Just change the vibration you don't of the get room just by being there. Yeah. Yeah. You don't even have to open your mouth. Oh, I love it. You're speaking my language. Just I'm think all those years of graduate life. school, we could, all those years of graduate school, we don't have to remember anything. We don't have to say, it. you just be, you put it out. I love it. And you're conscious I of what I think you're, you're already, yeah. already telling me about it, but um, maybe go deeper into the soul weaving process and what that looks like and how that, okay. how that manifested for you. Yeah. So what that is, is that, um, especially when once I learned the tapping which I had been a therapist for I don't know eight ten years I forget um and I would I had a large trauma caseload and so what I found with them is like they're empty inside they're like missing it was like in the trauma something was missing and we would do talk therapy 
that was making them worse. So I was like, oh my God, there's got to be a way. And that's how I learned. I First, I learned DMDR, which is an eye movement therapy. But some of mine, I had clients with multiple personality. That's what we called it back then in the old days. And and parts would switch. I mean, oh, man. I was like, what wow. the heck? <laughs> and I didn't want to make them worse, Kelly. My big prayer was, oh my God, don't let me make do anything that's going to make them worse. They were in such horrible situations. Anyway, so, and then I learned hypnosis, then I learned EMDR, but then there was sometimes afraid, a little afraid EMDR might flood them too much. Then I learned tapping and I could keep them in one trauma mm-hmm. and I could keep them. And so what began to happen is I realized consciousness fragments. Okay. So part of them is there and part of them is, is here. And that comes from years of working with, <laughs> I remember one guy it said, well, one of my, you know, this is a woman. She said to me, I see two of you. Mm. Like, like when we started to bring parts wow. back and, and she, she had been quite split off. So she <laughs> was talking went, to well, you and she saw two of you. She said, like in front of me, they're out of this, there's one out of this eye and this eye. And then wow. I was realizing what's going on Something's, in the brain. What's with consciousness. Right. And so right. then we did another round of tapping and it went back mm. to one. I was like, when she told me she had to see three of me, I said, well, you're going to have to pay me right. double then if I'm working with two of you right now. Like, <laughs> like what can I do? And, and that's how I learned how to, to reintegrate consciousness. So I call it soul weaving. So what we do with the tapping, I could do it with tapping and do it with a lot of things. But, but what we do is um, you get triggered. We find someplace you're triggered. Okay. We always so start with present time. And then, and then uh, I have you trace the energy back and you oftentimes can see yourself in, in like your home when you were four mm-hmm. or something. And then I have you go back and get you, do we do tapping here? And then we bring you here. And then um, there's a process I do with the eyes and do tapping. And that's what I call, so I call it soul weaving. So, and then what happens is people have more of them here in present mm-hmm. time. And it's just easier to be. Right. Let's, yeah. Yeah. Because you're not in two you're not in two realities. Yeah. Now the most severe example of that would be multiple personality dissociative identity mm-hmm. disorder, we call it now. That's the most severe, where they don't even know what they're doing in either. It's that's really right. severe. And most of us aren't that. But all of us have fragmented aspects of ourselves mm-hmm. out. I, unless you're enlightened, totally right. enlightened, and maybe you don't know. Not quite there. That's not, not quite there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that this week. So I think you walk on water before that happens. So I figured there the day I walk on yeah, water, then, exactly. then I might be getting exactly. close. But right now that ain't happening. What do you think? Um, <laughs> what do you think the mad? I mean, I don't say magic, but I mean, I'm just fascinated with tapping and how how it works and mm-hmm. energetically mm-hmm. what's happening and biologically what's happening. What do you think? Like, yeah. why is it? What in your description? Why is it your go-to? I mean, in EMDR too. I know they're similar in some mm-hmm. ways. Um, but what do you think is happening there that makes this so profound for this like deep soul work to let these fragments go? Okay. Well, you don't let them go. Or bring, you bring them, them in. in. Right, right, right. I guess let the and junk go, bring the, the, bring the consciousness back. Yeah. You you release the terror they're holding or the rage they're holding. For some people, they're holding your rage. So you know those nice people, those really holy people, okay, who like they never get yes. mad and they're this and that. But they they're they got a four year old or an eight year old or you know yeah. something that's and then all of a sudden rage erupts out yes. of this, like out of nowhere yes. and then oh my god I you know let me say some more prayers well good luck with that the gig is you got to go back and find the part of you that's holding the mm-hmm. rage yeah you see and then you release that with tapping with this part of you that's very spiritual that nothing wrong with being spiritual unless you haven't done your own your work. Because eventually this will come, is coming yes. back. Because you can, why? You can't be this mm-hmm. with this rage right. over here. In your yeah, I always say you, that. It has to right. erupt. It has yes. to. Energy has to it do has something. to move and go somewhere. Yeah. Yes. And there, you're either going to rage on other people or you're brutal to right. yourself. Right. Brutal. And some of these people, like if you look at sometimes they would beat themselves. Like say, even mm-hmm. saints. They would, they would have these probably huge spiritual experiences. And then the human then would come out. So they try to beat the beat that out of there. Not a good plan. Doesn't work. So the game is we all have parts. For some people, the rage is split off. For some people, they can really do anger, but their sadness or their terror or their helplessness is split yeah. off. 
So the, so what will happen is something will push your buttons. And then, and then instead of trying to fix today, like we all like to do to make today nice, or I told him I was angry. It's got nothing to do with that. Where to just yeah. put it off in my experience. And then I get that, bring that to here. And then, then nobody can push your buttons right. anymore. Oh gosh. And you, it's you really pull cool. back in and you reclaim so much of that raw energy to just. And the energy, you have more energy, your, vi- your body's vibrant. Yes. You know, like you, you, you just, you, you emanate. People look different after that mm-hmm. tapping, right? Exactly, like after we do exactly. some good F you tapping, they're, they're like glowy. It's so cool. Exactly. Cause you brought that part yeah. back and that now that that is integrated, more integrated. Um, and, um, and they, 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 and now all of a sudden they're speaking, you know, you can tell people who, uh, this is a generalization. Mm-hmm. Okay. I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. But a lot of time with people talk really high like this. I'm really mad at you. I, you right. know, uh, I really need to tell you something, but like nobody listens. They're like yep. invisible. Why? Because their energy is all mm-hmm. up here. They don't have their power center, the third mm-hmm. chakra, that energy back. So there's all sorts of ways you can bring energy back. There's many ways to use energy for healing. It's just talk therapy, like talking about it is good for some things, but it's not, I haven't found it, is, or at least maybe I'm not just good at it. Um, is good for really bringing energy back where and then that's why i love tapping because the way i do tapping is a little bit different mm-hmm. too i uh, the first thing i do is i get make sure polarity is okay and so i have them rub here and i if first you have to accept that i have anger in me or i have sadness in me so i always do an accepting affirmation but i do it here at this mm-hmm. spot because i studied with dr callahan the one who who developed tapping um several times like back in the 90s you know like uh, many people know eft what gary does gary craig started but gary was with i know gary gary too was we we were were all with callahan first then gary split Mm -hmm. off you know Mm -hmm. from there so callahan's original thing is it uh, would be to have you do this for uh uh, polarity so So is there a reason i do that and then when i do my rather than i do i cross mine some people um one person told me that this is a better way to do it, but I checked with Donna Eden. I checked with people I know about energy. They said, this okay. is fine. And it's also crossing right. the middle. I kind of, I mean, I think that makes sense close. to get those energies crossing. Yeah. yeah. But I, I, I don't think it would hurt it. I, I know at least it doesn't hurt. Somebody else said this might be more powerful. Okay. I don't know. I don't know, but I've been doing it this way for mm-hmm. so long. I, don't, I can't. Could you, before we go and on, could when you I'm talk here, about the polarity and why you need to reverse that? I think that's so important. Yes. Yeah. So energetically, we're supposed to be polarized on the planet. And then what happens like as the day goes, like, so say, um, think like a battery in a toy, the batteries have to be in a certain direction, right? We know that. Okay. Um, but as the, as the, as this is a toy winds down, like toward the end of the day, your polarity can shift and it means go to bed. Most of us drink coffee and keep mm-hmm. moving, but, but it, it's, it's, it doesn't work so much. So for tapping or any energy thing to work, you want your polar, you want your batteries in well. Okay. Mm-hmm. And oftentimes, like if I say to you, um, oh, tell me about your vacation, and you're talking about that, you're like your batteries are in straight. I say, hey, tell me about your mother-in-law or your ex or you know, your your ex who just cheated on you. Oh, oh your polarity goes yeah. like flip. Well, <laughs> you know, it flips. And so this this puts polarity in the fastest and this um callahan found this for the whole body because some people their polarity is off the whole time like they have sores that don't heal medicines don't work nothing works mm-hmm. for them okay so this is the best one to do for that and tapping here which everybody in the ft land mm-hmm. knows about is the best one to do on a thought so technically if i asked you about your if your polarity right now is fine but i say to you tell me about your ex you'll flip Mm -hmm. okay and if i tap here this one will usually work for a thought that's what callahan found and he tested thousands and thousands of people before he came up with this stuff but what i do to kind of up my success i have everybody rub here and state their accepting affirmation here and then i have you tap here to state your an intention because i know the power of intention i know how powerful you are so and i say things like i'm choosing to release this all the roots and origins of it that handles your lineage issue. Right. Okay. And then all that it means and does to me. So it really, your 
you're asking the energy to clear it on such a deeper level. And then you do the tapping. And I use eye movements most of okay. the time. Sometimes I yeah, don't. Yeah, I went through, I went through the, your free yeah. gift yesterday. It was awesome, by the way. So we'll definitely yeah. um, lead everyone that direction. Good. It was really good. I had some interesting beliefs come up as after I did the process, mm-hmm. it kind of did the daisy chaining. And I was like, oh, and there's that. Um, and what I wanted to ask you was, I have this sort of underlying belief. It's, it, it rides low. You know what I mean? It's like real stealthy, but it's kind of this, yeah. I'm not capable or I'm not, um, mm-hmm. what was it yesterday? Mm-hmm. It's not, I'm not capable. It was, I'm, I'm not cut out for this. Like there's something like that I don't have to get where I want to go. And, you know, right now it's like really low. So even when I worked on it yesterday, I was like, well, it's like a two or three, but I can tell that it's still kind of there, you know? Um, but my question is when we get comfortable with something, it seems like those beliefs drop way down and they're almost like undetectable. It feels like they're gone. But then every time I go to do something big and new, it's like, there's this same thread that shows right back up. So what, what's going okay. on there? Am I not cool. clearing them all the way? Or like, is it just part of it that they kind of come up when you up level and those same beliefs will be like pop right back up? Um, that's a really good one. I think it can be both. I think it can be both. I don't think it's I'm not capable. I would tap into I'm not capable. And what, it, and what are you afraid would happen if you knew you were? As a kid, as a kid, were you afraid it would happen? If I knew I was, if you really owned that, you were really one capable woman. Yeah, I feel like people wouldn't like me. Like that's something that comes up when it's like if I'm too successful, if I'm too powerful. Like people don't really like that in your family. They don't. You're like people will be jealous of you. That's Mm -hmm. accurate. So just own that. Mm -hmm. Yes, welcome to Earth. People get jealous on Earth, and as a little girl, you want to fit in. Mm Like, like in junior, I always tell myself, hey, Mary, junior high is over. You don't have to, everybody doesn't have to like right. you anymore, okay? So breathe into the fear that they won't like me. That's more where it's stuck. Okay. So breathe into it. I'll show you. We'll do, I would do love some to. tapping. Yeah, if you're game. Okay, cool. Let's go. All right, so breathe into that. Feel that, oh my God, they won't like me. I won't fit in. I'll be too much. Mm-hmm. Were you ever told you were too much? Like you're just you know, I too think much. I shut it down so early. You know, I, I, yeah. I really okay, exiled my leader. Like the leader that's in me was like gone. Yeah. <laughs> it's, and she wasn't, it wasn't her time. Yeah. That's yeah. okay. So breathe into that. Yeah, that definitely and just brings that little like, mm-hmm. got it? Got it. Now close your eyes, trace it back. Where do you see yourself with this like powerful inner leader? You know, you're but like, you just like got it going. And it wasn't accepted. It wasn't appreciated. Yeah. See, where do you find yourself? Where do you find yeah, yourself? Yeah, I go back. I mean, I'm like probably three or four years old. And there was like, yeah. there was a lot of chaos yeah. around. And um, yeah. I think, you know, I see myself sensing like, th- it, this shouldn't be like this. This is kind of nuts, you know? Yeah. And yeah. Um, uh-huh. and maybe trying to start like directing, like, can we clean up over here? Can we, you know, can we like yeah. organize some of this stuff? And just getting shut down. Like I was annoying. Okay, great. Perfect. Perfect. So now feel the energy, bring your awareness back there. Close your eyes, go find her, go Mm -hmm. find her. And imagine the you of today walking in to that house, the chaos. And allow yourself to walk up to the little girl and see her there. She's confused. She's, She's trying to make it better. She... And they're not listening. In fact, they don't even appreciate her. She's like getting in worse mm-hmm. trouble. Just go pick her up. And what do you want to say to her? What could you tell her now? Mm, I just want to tell her she's perfect and she's right. It mm-hmm. is chaotic. <laughs> you were yeah, right. Yeah, you, you were right. Like, and it's okay right. to want to you know, organize and clean up. And it's interesting because yeah. I, that's something I've had to reclaim also is, is sort of like my, the the side of me yep. that wants to clean up, you know, like I, I got real yes. messy. Yeah. Well, because then it's mm-hmm. safe. Yeah. Messy was safer. You see, when the house was clean, they, when it wasn't too chaotic, the energy was a little calmer. Mm-hmm. It was safe. We could relax. Mm-hmm. That's a different yeah. thing. And I can that's definitely feel thing. that right there in that throat chakra. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So let's get your girl out of there though. So go okay. get her. Just pick her up. 
to tell her you were right. And I appreciate mm-hmm. you. Yeah. Just bring her back. You're safe with me. I am capable. Is there anything you need to say to the people in that house? Or like, you know, you guys missed it. <laughs> it's kind of, it's, you know, I've done so much work back in this space. So mm-hmm. she's mm-hmm. kind of like, they're, they just are what they are, you know? Yeah, exactly. But she's glad Good. I'm there okay, for come sure. On, <laughs> exactly. Okay, we're getting her out of there now. So watch. So now pick her up. She's with you. Bring her to you. Walk right out the front door. And tell her, let me show you how life turned out. And grow her mm-hmm. up and skip over the lousy parts. Mm-hmm. You know, show her all the cool things. You went to school. You got some friends. You can drive a car now. You have money. You have a credit card. Like just show her everything that's cool about life now. Yeah. And grow her up with you. Bring her all the way up to today, who you're living with, how your life's going. Mm -hmm. And everybody's not going to like you, honey. We're on earth. It's a little nutty Mm -hmm. here. I always tell people, I'm like, there's not a person that existed on this planet that everybody liked ever. No, no, they didn't all like Jesus. That's exactly what I said. I'm like, even Jesus, you know, obviously he had haters. Yeah. And he was, yeah. But remember he got killed. She doesn't want Mm -hmm. to get killed. Mm -hmm. That's that. So that kind of isn't comforting, even though I said it, say it to him. So bring, close your eyes, bring her all the way up to today. The other thing you have today is discernment. You know where to lead and where to sit in the back Mm -hmm. seat. You have discernment. You have really good discernment. You're not to lead everywhere. That's mm-hmm. true. You have a place to lead. It's not everywhere, believe me. <laughs> totally. That's the good news. Right. <laughs> now, when she feels ready, oh, say, open your eyes and tell her, look out my eyes and see today. See where I am today. Oh, that makes me not cry. I got my own podcast show. Tell her, look, yeah. look, tell her, look. You won't know how that happens. Just say, look, look, look. Yeah. And see today. Oh yeah, that makes me want to cry. Like, feels good. Yeah, I'm safe. It's safe for me to leave, but we don't lead everywhere. Right. Not if you want to have a marriage, <laughs> right. okay, or or a partner. <laughs> Such like, a good message. <laughs> it's like that's what like therapists really wreck up their relationships because they think they're the therapist to their husband. Well, you can't do that. You'll lose your license. So you can't be somebody's her- therapist and sleep with them. Okay, it right. doesn't work. I have come a long so way. Don't with that. Leave. <laughs> Everywhere. Exactly. Don't lead everywhere. It's not with your siblings either. Right. They don't. Anybody who does not pay you money, do not lead. So true. Very that simple. That is probably Very the simple. first lesson Why? we all have to There's learn no, right, when we go into the healing world. <laughs> oh, totally. Because we go in out of our wound a lot of times to try to make things mm-hmm. better. So, which is lovely, but like, don't do it in your relationships or you'll be alone. Mm-hmm. And who want, you know, why, why be alone? It's fun to have a yeah. partner. My husband has a strong, strong leader also. So okay. at, when I was really learning to like reclaim that energy, Ooh, that got like, that got hairy. Cause he wasn't, yeah, that was he wasn't both. used to it, you know, and I wasn't yeah. either. And mm-hmm. I think I did what you said. Like I started owning it like everywhere and it was not authentic. You know, yeah. I don't need to. No. And then you have this little girl wanting to be fit yeah. in, wanting to belong. Yeah. And she didn't, she didn't fit energetically fit yeah. in there. Yeah. That's part of, not from your floor. Sometimes people on your, um, you know, people um, in your siblings, for example, that are, you, you, you have a connection with, but some of your siblings, you don't even know. Energetically, they have something with your parents, but not necessarily right. with you. I feel that. And so you don't fit in mm-hmm. there. And, you know, some people spend their whole life trying to get, their siblings or their mother or father to love them. Good luck with that. That's not why your soul mm-hmm. came. Your soul came for some, if, if your soul came for something big yeah. or no, I shouldn't even say big, that's a judgment, just something right. else. You came to make a difference. This is a very critical time on mm-hmm. our planet. And those of you who said, I- I'm here to help in the shift of the planet, which is what we're mm-hmm. in. Then it, it, your, your soul is like, come on. 
it, it, this is what we said we'd be. So you feel so dissatisfied and you're still busy trying to get your sister to like you right. or be on the same or come to the workshops you're going to. It's good luck with that. Leave them alone. Mm -hmm. Just do free them yes. from you and love them. And you can love them and let them be, mm -hmm. you know, versus, Oh, I can't go because the family might not like me anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, frankly, when I first started going to Simon, uh, here I am this little Irish Catholic girl, you know, with a uh, Hindu. You know, my maiden name is O'Toole. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I'm mean, like, really? My family is like, what is she oh. doing? You know? Mm -hmm. And, um, but I'm one of those people, you don't tell me I can't do something because it doesn't go over too well. So anyway, I'm doing that. And, but then I started to get nicer and nicer. And I said, after a while, my family started taking up a collection. She needs to go back for another week. <laughs> send her back. Send her, send her back. back. She's <laughs> awesome when she comes home. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Like we could live with her. Yeah. Cause I totally, yeah. everything, you know, why? Because everything you're not, everything, you had to be in order to survive there or to get through it or, you know, like how do, where do I fit in? Am I safe? It, it, it just melts away. And then who you really are can shine, mm -hmm. but, and you can shine anywhere. It's just don't open your mouth. Anymore. Yeah. Yeah. That's where you get in trouble when you're telling somebody else what to do. It's not paying. Yeah, you. exactly. And, um, mm -hmm. I, I, it's so funny to kind of look around and see, I see some of my friends that really haven't stepped into that soul calling yet. They're just, you know, they're working through it and they are, they're yeah. doing what I used to do. It's like, I wanted to share that advice all over the place because my soul was like yeah. craving that, but I was sharing it with all yeah, the wrong yeah. people and they were so exactly. annoyed this with me. This is not your audience. Oh, they were so annoyed this with me, not your audience. you know, and <laughs> Now yeah. I, it's, it's just yeah. so, it's such a different place and, you know, obviously we all have to kind of move through it and find yeah. it, but, um, yeah. now I right. see it happening and right. I'm like, Oh, I see that. <laughs> let's see what, yeah. let's see what they're doing here. Yeah. 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 But you have to clear the, the wound or get the little girl mm -hmm. out of there. And that's why I call it soul weaving. Cause she feel like, I mean, feel your, feel yourself now. What does it feel like? How do you feel inside right now? Yeah. I mean, I, I feel, yeah. I mean, I feel more expansive. Yeah. I feel yeah. more expansive. Yeah. Now go back and look at that incident in the house and see what you see. Yeah. It just looks brighter. Like the room is full, full of light. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So now you'll see when you start and you get that on that capable mm -hmm. thing, um, especially when you're starting something new I would suspect when you go to a new level, she gets yes, flipping out. Yes, that's what I've noticed is that like, I feel yeah. like solid, yeah. you know, I'm like good with my practice. I don't even have to look for clients. Yeah. Like I set up this whole but thing. But it's good enough. Keep it. Yeah, like yeah. everything feels yeah. good. I work through all that stuff, but then there goes right. my soul wanting to like expand further and do the podcast and, yeah. you know, do these other things I'm working right. on. And she's and freaking. she freaked yeah. the fuck out. Like she was like, yeah. "What yeah, exactly is happening? Is this? I'm not doing that. Yeah. No, nobody will like me." Yeah. And and so now she should be here mm -hmm. with you. Yeah. So what? But the only way we'll know is when you get the next bright idea. She's on yeah. board. She's not freaking out because she's here. Yeah. She's no, that here. That definitely feels different. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting, um, mm -hmm. I w I want to share this with you because I know you'll appreciate it. But after years and years of doing this, like this, I mean, it sounds like I'm doing the soul weaving work, you know, through a different mm -hmm. manner, yeah, but yeah. going back and mm -hmm. reintegrating these inner, inner child aspects and mm -hmm. healing and releasing mm -hmm. all that trapped energy. Um, every yeah. time I would check it back in with my inner child, she was terrified, you know, like curling up, pulling away. And for the first time, mm -hmm. I think it was about two weeks ago, I checked in with her and she looked at me and she was like, you've got this, you're fine. Yeah. And she, and that just yeah. makes me want to cry. But like, she was strong, like she felt stronger than the adult me. And I was like, Whoa, this is, yeah. so, this is different, <laughs> you know? Right. Right. And it felt right. amazing. Right. You know, she was like, no, we're good. Yeah, We're good. And we're yeah. good. Exactly. But now another one will yeah. wake up. It's not over till it's right. over. Okay. So another one. Is it ever <laughs> over, Mary? I think so. You start walking on water. I think we almost <laughs> get there. It, it It is and it isn't. Like sometimes I think I'm like almost there, but I also know <laughs> when I get to that point, I get a little nervous because you're so oh, that's cheap or something else. Gets it's like bigger. every time I'm like, oh, I feel amazing. Uh, right. It's like, you right. know, a week later, I'm it's like, oh, fine. I feel. Here we but, go. It, but, but, but what I know what I know for sure is that if you just stay the same thing, stay welcome it all, accept that you've got it. You know, that's why we do this. We, I'm choosing at least the origin of this. Mm -hmm. 
we, we like we could have done some tapping mm-hmm. with her, but she didn't need it. She just came right back. Yeah. So it's, it's tapping won't hurt you. It'll just quiet the nervous right. system down. Because remember, every cell has mm-hmm. memory. Everything has memory and this quiets the body down. So all of you gets mm-hmm. in. And sometimes when they're there and they're really terrified, you have to tap for them. So there's different ways yeah. to Do you work, notice work it. that um, mm-hmm. I, sometimes I find that very spiritual people that are like very upper chakra mm-hmm. kind of poo-poo tapping a little bit. And I feel like they're the people, as you described earlier, that maybe need it the most because they're not integrated into those lower chakras. They're and- not in their lower chakras. And what will happen, mm-hmm. you'll see. But I don't worry about mm-hmm. it. I fear, you know, everybody comes right, to tapping right, on right. their own. Like, Whatever. If you could find a different way, go for it. I mean, Jesus didn't tap right. anybody and people healed. So who who am I to say this must be the one only sure. religion sure. to get to heaven? Okay. Sure. So, um, but if there's energy that's not um, transmuted in them, something will trigger them. And that's where you see, this is where, this is, this is another area I love to work in. When people have like spiritual teachers that then be, yes. betray them. It, you, that tells me that these lower chakras, they got, they are getting higher and, like and higher. And then off. that's where you'll see yeah. they yeah. split off. And then you'll see them like do things or mm-hmm. whatever. And it's not that they're not, it, a, a lot of times these upper chakras get blown up, get blown open. So they, and people love to be around them to have spiritual right. experiences, which is lovely, but that's, but that's not the whole thing. If you really want to be this, mm-hmm. You can't not deal with this totally because this is voltage. Every time you let go, you have, we all have voltage. Okay. But like, even this, if I put, if I still have anger in me or somebody, for example, um, uh, so I can have big spiritual experiences, but I still have anger and I put that anger out with this much voltage. Oh, you make a Mm -hmm. mess. You make a Mm -hmm. big mess. So so voltage is about coherent energy, but you can be coherently and just run it through this. Oof, yeah. And I mean, I, I feel it in people's field. I'm sure you do too. You know, when you're around somebody that hasn't processed yeah. that lower chakra stuff. It, yeah. It's a, yeah. But duct tape your mouth because it's not right. your role. They come to you as a client and they're giving you money, right. but just one thing I would say, just be grateful that you're not there. Mm-hmm whatever, who knows what lifetime you were. I don't right. know. Maybe we've been uh, there before. Yeah. I don't know. I think I've but been there in this also, life, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and then, and then just put light out and know that in the right time they will get triggered and then you're available if they, if that's your role to play mm-hmm. or if not, yeah. but do right. your work. The big thing for everybody, just right. do your work. I don't care. Do you. <laughs> you've got. I don't care. Yeah, exactly. So it's so much fun to just show up and not, I don't have to shine. I don't have to say something. I don't have to nothing. I just show up and be the love that I am, that you are like, just love. It's so powerful. Mm -hmm. And then if I have a different role with you, like you're playing, paying me money, then I play a totally different role. And I, you know, I'll, I'll teach, I'll show you what I'm experiencing. I'll whatever. I think, but I have to have your permission. Mm-hmm. I think you're describing, I mean, one of my favorite places to tap with people is to, to do the shadow work, but to find the judgment yeah. that we, that we're carrying towards oh, yeah. these aspects of ourself that we've, you know, pushed away right. and that we judge in other right. people. Right. And exactly. That's yeah. where it is. Yeah. And I, um, again, I think with like deeply spiritual people, sometimes that's a blind spot. <laughs> that they don't recognize how much they're judging. And I, like I said, I've been there. I've, and that was one of the biggest things for me was to recognize like, I'm not all love and light. Yes, I do have opinions about these people and to kind of deal with the energy of judgment in myself so that mm-hmm. I could truly mm-hmm. just be like, okay, you do you, you're on your path. I'm going to do me. And if we come together, great. Yeah. And if not. Yeah. And if you want, yeah. you know, and one thing about me, a lot of people don't really like to work with me. I shouldn't say that. That sounds terrible. But because I just, I tell yeah. like it is. I can't lie. I'm not going to entertain your mm-hmm. ego. So you, you've you got to really be ready to for me to just say things. But pay me. I'm not going to just like walk into a room with my friends and start pointing out what energies I am aware of in right. the field. Like, really? That's Who? just rude. Like, <laughs> like your little girl. I won't have any friends. Like <laughs> Nobody wants a friend like you that. Know. <laughs> exactly. It's like, you know... <laughs> 
It's like, you know, the emperor's got no clothes on. Oh, yeah. no, nobody wants that person right. as their friend that calls yeah. it out. As you, But if you want a therapist that'll call it out, that'll be straight with you. I'm not going to waste your money. I don't waste yeah. time or money. Why? Yeah, absolutely. You know? Yeah. And so you know? talk to me a little bit. I was reading in your book. Um, and I think this is so important. When that polarity is flipped, how will somebody mm-hmm. know, like, if I'm not, if my energy is running the wrong way? you know, what, what are the symptoms of that? Like, are they trying to release and things aren't, aren't going anywhere? What, what does that look like? It, yeah. So if your polarity is fully re- reversed, okay. Usually that's because you've got something in you that's toxic. Maybe your environment's toxic. Maybe there's people who live with mold in their house. I mean, their whole system, their immune system, nothing works mm-hmm. for them. And they're depressed and a does lot. Does it flip as like a protective? I can't remember what that, why it does. No, no. Some, for some people, think like a bell mm-hmm. curve. Okay. For some people, it's, it's like that, like all the time. Mm-hmm. And it's horrible for them because they, it's not that they don't try, but usually there's something on them or in them, excuse me, that's mm-hmm. toxic or they're breathing something okay. toxic and they've been this way a long time or it's something mm-hmm. like that. So you really have to investigate with those and figure it out. Um, then in the middle of the, of the bell curve would be all the people who they just flip on a, a thought. He, um, there's pervasive and then there's thought based. That's why EFT was called TFT thought field mm-hmm. therapy. You think a thought and that's why you have to think about what you're working on and you're in and there's a disruption. He, he felt it was on the thought field. Okay. okay. We just use the meridian system to shift mm-hmm. that. Okay. Um, but so most people reverse on a thought, like even for you, the thought of being going to the next level reversed right. part of you is going, yeah. no, yeah, no, yeah. no. So, he, so, you know, and in like, like you have to find you want, for me, that's the tricky part. What what do you afraid would happen? The things like I was mm-hmm. saying to you. Um, so that's that. But the ones who are fully polarized, the way to find that out is there's um, you can go to a somebody who does energy okay. checking and they get yes or no answers for a body. And they'll put like they'll have you say, you know, my name is Kelly and you'll say no. Like my name is Mary and you'll mm-hmm. say yes. Like it's like your your yeses are no's and your no's are yeses. So there's the chronic type. Then there's ones who just be, are on a mm-hmm. thought. So the chronic ones you rub okay. here, the thought ones you, you okay. tap here, that small intestine meridian. That was the one that Dr. Callahan found came up the most. But if you had them tap on that, it would reverse at least just for a short period of time so we could make yeah, the treatment yeah. work. Okay. But a lot, but this has been dropped out of. Yeah, I was, I was just thinking, I'm going to add that back in. I remember learning about it. Yeah, add it back in. Um, and then also, yeah, add it back in. Yeah, that nine gamut process. I, you know, Mm -hmm. I had a mentor, and I still adore this person. But I remember early on her saying, you know, I don't, I don't use that much, so I just kind of stopped using it. And yeah, that you need if in my world, if you're processing trauma because the brain freezes. Mm -hmm. And so when you, when the brain freezes, it's when you start moving your eyes around, then it gets the brain. That's what the EMDR is based on. It, it, it does something and I've seen it and I've seen people like, oh, when I looked over here, the images, something happened. So the eye movement, again, if you're just using it for yourself, mm-hmm. so the general public, I'm just doing it for myself, just do the regular thing. You might not yeah. need it. But if you're a clinician from in yeah. my world, I think you should get trained on the whole thing. I think you should know definitely, really, definitely, yeah. I mean, how to help more and more and more people. Yeah, I mean, I I've been you know? super successful not using it, but um, but there's yeah. certainly times when you feel stuck, you know. And you're and I, what I was realizing yesterday was like, you know, I'm going to start adding that back in some. Add it back yeah, in. It can't no, hurt. It takes no, what, but it's just two seconds, ten seconds, <laughs> like you know. I always say to people, will you wait? So you're wasting 10 seconds of the uh, therapy session. Like you don't think you do that by your talking. Right. right. Like, like everything using every word out of your mouth is yeah. so brilliant. No, like, and when you were, you were talking about the eye go. movement, I mean, I am already on right. board for that. Like I know how important that is. And I just thought like, it just mm-hmm. kind of turned into a habit that I got yeah. away from, you know? And I right. was like, Oh, right. it will up your success guided to, to add that back in. So, um, yeah. yeah. To me, though, Kelly, the biggest, biggest thing is if they're what I love the most about tapping versus like EMDR or whatever, it's 
you, everybody triggers everybody else. Mm -hmm. So in, you know, if you tap enough times, like you'll see the clients have your issue. You just have to be ahead of them, like even by a a day, Mm -hmm. but otherwise you can't see it and you can't help them with it. So the biggest thing is that therapists always, or healers, always, or coaches, whatever you want to call yourself, always get it. Oh man, I got that same issue. And so when you're tapping on yourself, you're helping yourself not to get burned out. You're clearing another issue and you pay for it. I mean, come yeah. on. It's a you know, triple header. I mean, a triple Seriously. play. Like, guys, don't think you don't have this thing. For sure. It's, it, you're fooling yourself. Yeah, it's been interesting to see okay. over the last, you know, I'm trying to think of how, I think my business has officially been open eight years now, but I've really been mm-hmm. tapping like 10 or 11 years, probably at this point, but it's been so interesting to watch as I've grown through my stuff, how different clients show up in my practice. Is that, but that's energy law. Right. That's a law of resonance. But it's like, so you'll resonate with different It's like, clients. I remember somebody telling me that all those years ago, but to look back at that, it's like, wow, that is so cool. Wow. You know, that yeah, is yeah, so cool. Yeah. 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 And that's why a lot of times a client will outgrow somebody. Because the client moves faster than the than the therapist, but they like their therapist, so they yeah. stay there longer. And it's really not yeah. working. And the therapist hasn't Isn't shifted. And the, you know, so you shift and you want to, you need to be able to like, okay, mm-hmm. thank you for where you took me. I want to go mm-hmm. here. Ready for the you next know? level. I where do you want and the question is where do I where's my soul calling me right. to go? Oh yeah. my gosh, Mary, this has been so fun. We have a few minutes left. If mm-hmm. you're okay with it, okay. are you okay with doing a little bit of tapping? Um, sure. So sure. when I was tapping yesterday on the, I'm not capable thing, the next level that I kind of mm-hmm. had to laugh at was, you know, I'm doing a ton of writing, putting together a book mm-hmm. and the belief that, mm-hmm. that popped up was I'm not worthy of, um, what was it? I'm not worthy of being heard. And I thought, mm-hmm. Wow that's important to look at <laughs> doing mm-hmm. writing a book okay. and doing a podcast, you know? So mm-hmm. is that something we could work on? You work on anything. Are you cool with that? Okay. I'm ready. Okay. All right. So we're going to, so we'll do your belief. You think it's, I'm unworthy. I'm not worthy. It's like, I'm not worthy of being heard. And like the big long part of it was I'm not worthy of being heard as, as like a credible expert or something. You know what I mean? I know that's really wordy, but I'm not worthy all. of being heard. Is it as, I'm a fraud? Um, like like an imposter thing? Or I know. I'm, I kept trying to figure out what the I am statement was, and I was having yeah. trouble with that. Yeah, like the only thing I could come up with yesterday, and it didn't totally resonate, but it kept popping up, was like, I'm not smart enough to be an expert. Yeah, I think, yeah do that. So take a breath. Okay. And think about your next step. I give this book, but you know, you're really not smart enough. Or you want to do your podcast, whatever the next thing is and get that thing that you get, feel it in the body. I get kind of cold. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where is it in the body? It feels like it's kind of everywhere. Like it's not super intense, but it's like this subtle contraction yeah, like kind of all like over numbing like a freezing mm-hmm. it's a little bit of a freeze yeah cool breathe into it zero to ten. Ten means i can't stand it you know right now it's probably only like a four okay great so come down i three don't inches like how it feels but it's not like terrible right 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 okay so come down three inches and over three inches and rub in that soft area yeah you got it right there and feel it it should be tender mm-hmm okay. Now tap into this, the aspect of you that, that doesn't feel smart enough, even though I believe I'm not smart enough. Even though I believe I'm not smart enough. I accept myself. I accept myself. You're afraid you're going to expose yourself that you're not all that. Is there? Sh- mm-hmm. it, right. Like that I'll get all this exposure and then everyone, everyone will see. <laughs> They're going to find out. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Okay. Breathe into it. So even though I'm really afraid I'm not smart enough. Even though I'm really afraid I'm not smart enough. And they're going to find out. And they're going to find out. I accept myself. I accept myself. I'm really afraid I'm not smart enough. Even though I'm really afraid I'm not smart enough. They're going to find out. They're going to find out. Laugh at me. They're going to laugh at me. Like shame and humiliation is what it feels like. Shame and humiliation. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I accept myself. I accept myself. 
great. Now, side of your hand. Now, here's where you set an intention. I am choosing to release this shame and humiliation and fear. We could we could lump it all, but it's mm-hmm. it's around that energy. Like yep, totally. choosing to release this fear of, of being humiliated. Of being I'm found choosing out. to release this fear of being humiliated and, ha- and, and found all. out. All the roots and origins of why I have it. All the roots and origins of why I have it. And all that it means and does to me. And all that it means and does to me. I am choosing to release this fear that I'm really not smart enough. I'm going to get found out. I'm cho- choosing to release this fear that I'm not smart enough and I'm going to get found out. Yeah. All the roots and origins of it. All the roots and origins of it. And all that it means and does to me. And all that it means and does to me. I love that I'm statement. I'm choosing to release this fear. I'm choosing to I'm release this fear. I'm not smart enough. I'm not smart enough. And they're going to find out. They're going to find out. Like it's the fear of humiliation and, and fear of being humiliation. exposed. Yeah. All the roots and origins of it. All the roots and origins and of it. And all that it means and does to me. And all that it means and does to me. Okay, great. Now we do our tapping. So eyebrow, side of the eyes. Under the eyes. Under the nose. Under the lip. I'm doing it this way. Under the arms, four inches. This one should hurt. This is where fear of the future is. So it should be tender. Um, thumb. We'll do it like that. We do it in the book. First finger, next one, and little one, the back of your hand, the side of your hand, collarbone. Tap in this soft area between your ring finger and your pink and your little finger right there. And I always, it's good to put your hands hand on your body because it keeps you in your body. Mm-hmm. Okay, like with your head that. straight, close your eyes and open them. Head straight, look down one way, look down the other way. Big circle all the way around the room. Very good. Now go in the opposite direction, all the way around the room. Mm-hmm. And then hum. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Count to five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And then hum again. Great. I brown. Then we're going to tap again. I brown. And this side of your eyes. Under your eyes. Under your nose and lip. Under your arms, four inches. Oh, you know what? We forgot the liver spot. I, forgot here. I actually yeah. did it <laughs> earlier. You did it? Oh, good. I did. Okay. The liver spot. I forgot. Yeah. That's in the book. Yeah. I'm so not sure they see it like right under the yeah, breast there. Right there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thumb. First thing. Next one. Little one, the back of your hand, and the side of your hand. And then right here at your collarbone. You're out a little bit. I would come in more. A little bit more. Kidney meridian is there. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, deep breath for your body. Now think that thought. You're going to be on stage. You're going to be stupid. They're going to find out. Everybody's going to know you really are stupid. Tell me what's happening in the body. The body always gives you a clue whether we got right. it. Right. Mm-hmm. I would say that, like, I feel more expansive in my whole body, except for my hands are very cold. Okay, so breathe into it. Zero to ten, how intense? Certainly, it feels less true already. Um, maybe like a two. Okay, great. Let's do an eye roll. Nobody ever does that anymore. Hands here, <laughs> tap here. Put this on your body. Okay. Your head is straight. Look straight. Now drop your eyes to the floor and very slowly, like, like roll them up in front of your face and up to the top of your head, all the way up, like, and then come, you can come back down. Okay. Now check your body. See if that did anything. I feel a little warmer. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, nobody does that one anymore. That usually yeah. if you can get it at two or lower, you can get that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now let's put in the belief you really would love to have in this place. Okay. Whenever you take a belief out, it's really important to put something positive <clears throat> in that you like if you had a little girl, what would you program her? I would program her with like, I'm I have everything I need. I'm smart enough. 
to accom- to go after my dreams, to accomplish my dreams. Yeah, but then if someday she finds somebody smarter than her, she's screwed. Yeah. Is that what you're going to program your kid? Uh, no. I you program her? I don't know. I mean, I'm just thinking like I'm perfect and whole. <laughs> yeah. I'm amazing. Like I am so precious and yeah. it's okay to make mistakes and not know mm-hmm. everything. Mm-hmm. Usually I tell myself nowadays, I don't have to know everything. I just have to know how to be in alignment and I know how to do that. Mm, I like that. You know, yeah. That one you know, yeah. I like, I like I, 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 you know. Yeah. You know, because you can't go on podcasts and things like this and expect to know what they're going to ask you all the time. Right. I don't need to know everything. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to say I don't know something. Yes. I just have to know how to be in alignment. And I can do that. Mm -hmm. Not that one? Yeah, I like that. I like it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when you think of that, I don't have to know everything. I just have to know how true does it feel? Or is there part of you dragging your feet like, "Mm, are you sure? (laughs) <laughs> no, it actually does. It feels really true. Yeah. Okay. 10. I, mean, I would say maybe like a nine. Yeah. You know, I'm sure there's like that. one little part of me that's like, but are one, you sure? One part. Think of your car going, you got one part with a foot out. Okay. So yeah. Yeah, crossover. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So crossover. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so even though I don't totally believe this yet. Like maybe, maybe two feet out. Maybe. Exactly. Maybe exactly. <laughs> I don't quite believe this yet. I accept myself. Even though I don't quite believe this yet, I accept myself. Even though I don't quite believe this yet. Are you Even sure? I don't quite believe this yet. I'm not I, totally sure about it. I accept myself. I don't quite believe this yet. Even though I don't quite believe this yet. I accept myself. I accept myself. Is that your opinion? I am choosing to release anything that's blocking me from, from knowing this. I am choosing to release anything that's blocking me from knowing this. All the roots and origins of it. All the roots and origins of it. And all that it means and does to me. And all that it means and does to me. I am choosing to release anything that's blocking me from knowing this. I am choosing to release anything that's blocking me from knowing this. All the roots and origins of it. All the roots and origins of it. And all that it means and does to me. And all that it means and does to me. I'm choosing to release anything that's blocking me from knowing this. I am choosing to release anything that's blocking me from knowing this. All the roots and origins of it. All the roots and origins of it. And all that it means and does to me. And all that it means and does to me. This is like saying, we know it didn't start here. Mm -hmm. It's what is the roots, whether it's this lifetime, last lifetime, your parents' lineage, who cares? Mm -hmm. You can, there's no time anyway, so you just get it from here. How can I do a lot of time trying to figure out why I'm screwed up? (laughs) (laughs) Release it under your lip, under your arms. Then under your chest, the one that nobody gets, which is right. liver meridian, which is a lot about anger. Anger, rage, um, hit that point. <laughs> first finger. Next one. Little one. The back of your hand. The side of your hand. Come on. Back of your hand here. Close your eyes and open them. Head straight, look down one way, look down the other way. Roll them in a circle one way, and then in the opposite direction. And then hum. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Out to five. One, two, one, three, two, four, five. five. And then hum. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Great. I brought it. Not your eyes. Not your eyes. Nose. Lip. Under your chest. Little one. Back of the hand. Down of your hand. Color roll. Okay. Deep breath for your body. Now, let's see what you got. Feel good. Uh, they're going to find out or mm. you don't know anything. No, it feels pretty good. I was just thinking that's part of the reason I wanted to do this with you live. I'm like, there's nothing like owning your shit to your audience. <laughs> <laughs> so, but if I, I would tell people that all the time. I'm like, if you want to clear something, tap 
and tell somebody about it, you know, Mm -hmm. tap on it, bring it down and then tell somebody about the same issue and see if it's come down and then it'll bring up the next layer. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. And not to mention people like it when you're real. I don't know about you, but I don't like it when people are, well, you know, I'm, you know, I have worked with so much. And I, you know, it's incredible. What I really like you start telling on yourself. You you make, you have a lot more friends. Right. People like can get it. They can relate to you. They don't have to pretend and you, and you're not pretending. Right. So be right. real. It, Certainly not. Be real with people. And then and everybody's helping everybody right, to get yeah. to whatever next thing. Consciousness continues to expand. It just it, like, what's the next thing I can expand to? You will never stop expanding. Mm-hmm. Even when you die, you're still expanding into like a bigger version of you. There's all these different. The question is, what are we going to expand this planet to? Mm -hmm. that's the key part about what's happening right now. It's so critical that those of us, and it's not everybody, like everybody didn't come here with a mission, by the way. So leave your relatives alone. (laughs) Like, but those of you who did, you know, it, you feel it. And, and the planet needs you. The planet needs those of us to unite who said we would be these pillars of light. Sometimes I have a graphic. It looks like acupuncture needles in the mm. in the grid of the planet. And so light up your area. It's, it's, it's called critical. I pulled a card yesterday that said pillar of light. It's a beautiful card. And yeah. so I love that we're talking about that. And I know that so many people just hearing you say those words, it's going to bring tears to the, their eyes because they know it's true. And they're feeling mm-hmm. that calling. They're being called right. to do right. it. So if somebody's sitting out there and they're feeling that well of like, holy crap, she's talking to me. Right. Right. What do you think the next, like, what advice can we give them as their next step to go? Okay. (laughs) I'm going to. Tapping. Tapping is one of the fastest ways and you can do it on your own. Mm -hmm. So become conscious and, and don't stop learning. Don't stop. Find a mentor, find somebody Mm -hmm. who, who will help you go to the next level. Somebody who's who's where you want to be. Don't Mm -hmm. stay too long with somebody who's not where you want to be. Find somebody who's where you want to be and get mentoring. That's the fastest way. You want to go to the Olympics, find somebody who's been to the Olympics or at least has like gotten in the prelim games or something. You know what I mean? I tell people that all the time. Like nobody goes to the Olympics without a coach. No, we need help. We We can't do it alone. And, and, you know, um, one of the things I do, and they're all welcome to come be on it at this point. I did it for the pandemic. Um, just because I knew everybody's freaking out. I'm thinking, how can I know this and not get it out? So I do a very, some some of what I call Tapping Tuesdays. It's every Tuesday at two o'clock Eastern. It's free. We have hundreds of people, a hundred people all over the world tapping. Awesome. Come on that for free. Just go to awesome. marysice.com. Okay. Um, and then you can practice tapping. And then the next thing I'll be doing, is, I'm going to start up again, is some trainings for clinicians and support for healers. That's the next thing I'm going to yeah. do. So we get these, you know, pods of healers or groups of healers where we come together and we just move to the next level, move to the next level. So you can get the support you need. That sounds beautiful. Are you running a program right now? Did I see that? I'm right now I'm teaching for the shift network. Mm -hmm. So it's, and it's awesome. It's like really fun. So uh, we're, we're in the middle of that series, but it's actually, I think you can get it on the shift network. The first one of it. Okay. Um, I'm in my second one. Uh, it's ever, it'll be evergreen. So you, I think if you go to the shift network.com, I think you can get that or it's on my website, just go on my website and okay. you can sign up for that without now I'm in the wrong week, four of the nine week one. We just did a seven week one. That was really fun. Oh my yeah. God. And yeah. Uh, yeah, it's all about being loyal to your soul. Yeah. Mm, so there's that. all sorts of things. Just come get, get on my list, get the download, whatever, get on my list. You can see what I'm doing. I try not to send too many emails. No, I, I'm on I'm your list you. and oh, the stuff that comes through, I love, I would recommend it to anyone. Um, also, if anybody wants to do more of the tapping that we just did on the beliefs, mm-hmm. which I think is so powerful. I definitely felt it shift yesterday. Mm-hmm. Um, go to the energy of belief.com for that free yeah. downloadable vi- video. Yeah. And, um, are you on social media at all? Like Facebook, Instagram, Facebook, yeah, okay. there's Facebook, Inst- Instagram, okay. LinkedIn. Those. Yeah. 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 Mary, this is get been... on my email list because then when I'm doing something like I'm teaching at ASAP, 
uh, there's a conference there in a couple in May. Mm-hmm. I don't know when this is going to broadcast, but there's a conference there in May, and I'm teaching um, a post conference on working with trauma, the stages of trauma treatment, and how to integrate that. Fantastic. And I have a frozen in time one as a breakout that they're broadcasting. It's Ooh, a hybrid. Very cool. Yeah. That would yeah, be about soul, that more out. about soul weaving. Yeah. 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 Well, Mary, thank you for sitting with me. I oh, so it's appreciate been a joy. It's fun. Yeah, mm-hmm. this has been really fun. I appreciate what yeah. you're doing for the industry because yeah. Lord knows we need it. <laughs> we yeah. need more people. <laughs> we need more therapists tapping, in my opinion. I know that, yeah. you know. Yeah. 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 We things. need soul back in therapy. We it's come on. Yeah. You know, like Hey, you made it to the end. I want to thank you for being a part of the Manny Lab pod. It means the absolute world to me. Please consider heading over to Instagram and Facebook and liking and following so that you can stay up to date on all the content that's rolling out. Also, don't forget to follow on YouTube, the Manifestation Lab, so that you can see what we're doing with these meditations and this tapping thing. It helps to be able to see what we're doing. I'll see you in the next episode.